Okay, so you clicked on this video because you want to figure out how do you measure for a standing seam metal roof? Let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and, well, why it makes sense to listen to me. My name is Zach Blankensop. I'm the owner of a company called Digital Roofing Innovations. I'm a U.S. military veteran. And I'm a licensed general contractor and roofing contractor in over nine states. So I promise you came to the right place to get your information. So as you can see, we're actually on a project right now. We're at the Blue Ridge Music Center in Galax, Virginia for the National Park Service. So we're actually replacing a 24 gauge standing seam metal roof with a new 24 gauge standing seam metal roof. So you're gonna to get to see exactly how we got our measurements for this particular project. Okay, so measuring for a standing seam roof, it's very similar to the way that you're going to measure for an asphalt shingle roof. And we're gonna make another video about that at a later date. But for this video, we're gonna talk about standing seam metal only and then you can check out some of the other videos about how to measure for other type of roofing systems. Now, standing seam can be a little difficult, uh, but we're gonna talk about all the different things that you need to do to make sure that you're getting the right measurements, and that's including using your trusty measuring tape. You need to pin in a piece of paper, and then afterwards, we're gonna talk a little bit about cut sheets, and then how you can properly measure your cut sheet and your measurements to make sure that you're getting the right material order. Okay, so the type of standing seam roofing project you're going to do is going to dictate a little bit about how you measure it. So on this particular project, we're doing what's called a replacing kind. So I'm basically going to be installing the same kind of roofing system that currently is on here, just obviously with newer panels. So it makes it kind of easy because what I need to do is just measure all of my panels, the length and the width, measure the length and width of my roofing system, and we can start building out what we call a cut sheet. And I'll explain a little bit more of what a cut sheet is towards the end of the video. And also, I'm gonna show you different ways that you can actually measure for your particular project. Now, some of you guys may be installing standing seam over the top of shingles. You may be installing sanding seam over the top of your decking after it's been taken off, or it's just a new construction project. So I'm gonna show you different ways that you can actually measure for your roof using both traditional ways, which is using a uh, some type of measuring device on the ground. And then I'm gonna show you a few aerial or satellite imagery uh, companies that you can use to get a very inexpensive measurement of your roofing system. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get the length of our panels here on this roof. So the easy thing to do is go ahead and just run your measuring tape all the way up the panels underneath your ridge cap. And you're gonna measure from your ridge all the way down to the eaves of the roof. Now, one of the things I always do is I just go ahead and write everything out in inches so I don't have to worry about converting while I'm up on the ladder. So this particular panel is 171 inches. Now I'm not going to write 171 inches on my paper for one reason. We have to make sure that we account for the overlap down here on your panels. So your overlap is going to go right over the top of your drip edge but it's vitally important that you always measure just a little bit long on all of your standing seam panels. Now, the reason because of that is if you come up short and your panel stops here on a project like this that's roughly about 20,000 square feet, I'm gonna lose almost $100,000 in just my material bill because those panels cannot be used. So you have to make sure, sure, sure that you have the right length of all of your panels. So I always recommend checking this in several places because sometimes your measuring tape may get caught on something on the way up to the bridge. So another place to check is always just against the run of your roof. It's going to be right against the drip edge that's going to go up through here. Double check it here and then also measure on a couple other panels just to be 100% sure. Now the rule of thumb that I normally use is I always cut mine an extra two inches. So I'm going to order 173 inches for these panels because, well, I always want to make sure that I'm just a little bit long. Now you are going to lose a little bit of money obviously by measuring just a little bit long. We're talking about a very, very short or small amount of money compared to you measuring short and you losing money on your entire project because you measured your panels too short. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna measure for is the width of our panels. Now, this one's a little bit weird because typically your panels are gonna be anywhere from 12, 14, 16 to 18 inch panels. These panels that we're removing are actually just over 13 inches. Now, again, most of your panels you're gonna install are gonna be even numbers between 12 and 18 inches. That's the most common, depending on the manufacturer. So just something to keep in mind if you're doing a replacing kind is making sure that you're measuring these well beforehand, okay? So in a replacing con job, obviously we're gonna to wanna to use panels very similar. So just when you're making sure that you're counting all these over, if you're going with a larger size, just like we are, for instance, we're going back with a 16 inch panel that you take and count at this, okay? So measuring the width is very simple. You literally just measure the width of it. So the next measurement you wanna take is your height of your actual seam. So this are one inch seams. Now this is really important, obviously, when you're doing a replace in kind type of roofing project. Now, if you're just going to put sanding seam down the first time, you're not really gonna need this measurement, but this is important whenever your materials actually come out in location to know exactly what you have. Now, you could have anything from an inch up to two inch uh, roof seams, depending on the gauge of metal and all that stuff that you're gonna be using. But this is what that measurement is. Your height of your seam, is exactly what you're gonna see with this measuring tape right here. Okay, so when you're getting the width of your roof, there's a few ways that you can do it. You can either count your panels and then measure your last panel. So for instance, if this is my short panel, and I know all of these are a nice even number, like 14 inches, you can count your panels and let's just say there's 40 across here. Then you can measure your last panel and see what it is. And then you know that you're gonna have to cut that last panel and account for this. Now you can't measure just half, or go ahead and order just half a panel. You wanna go ahead and measure the full panel. But keep in mind you take into account the overhang as well. Okay, so on this panel, you're also gonna need overhang to lap over the top of your drip edge. So you can use two different ways on if you wanna just measure the entire length. Again, you can just count your panels. That's an easy way of doing it. Or if it's a new project and you wanna measure the entire length of the plane of this roof, you can either use measuring tape or one of these things I really like to use is a counter. Now, the bigger the wheel, the more accurate these are, but even a wheel like this, you're gonna be accurate definitely within 5% and typically within about two to 3%. So again, this isn't gonna give you the most accurate measurement. Your old measuring tape's gonna give you the most accurate, but this is an easy way to get you in the ballpark. And I'll show you how this works just in a moment. So this little gadget is super, super simple, easy to use. It's very self-explanatory. All you're gonna do is make sure it's all the way on zero. The biggest thing is to make sure that you're staying on as level of ground as possible. As you see, we have a slight slant on this. And so the numbers are gonna be off just a little bit. That's why I show you different ways to be able to get the width of the plane of your roofing system, because this is again, not gonna be 100% accurate. But what you do is you wanna start right at the end of the, <clears throat> of the plane of the roof, and then just go ahead and walk it out. So as you can see, we've got 59 for our footage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this numbers to counting panels and then using the measuring tape to see how long this is. Okay, so I got 59 feet on this, so we're almost exactly what we had with our counter. The last way we're gonna count these up is by counting the panels. Okay, so we got 
55 panels at 13 inches each. Now we're gonna divide that by 12 and we got 59.58. So as you can see, no matter how you count it up, you can get roughly the right estimate for how many panels you need. Okay, remember at Digital Roofing Innovations, we always wanted to show you the easiest way to get something done. So there's a couple ways of being able to get the pitch on your roof. We have a separate video on all the different ways to get the pitch of your roof. But I'm gonna show you the two easiest ways. One is with the Johnson Pitch and Slope Locator. You can pick these up for about 10 bucks from any hardware store. Anyone that sells roofing products is gonna have one of these. Or you can download an app called Pitch Gauge. This is what I actually recommend using. Most all of us have a smartphone, but if you don't, you can always use a manual way of being able to get your pitch. The way this thing works is you're just gonna put it right on the edge of your roof and this reads 8.6 so we're going to go ahead and round that up to nine and you can do this in several different areas just to make sure that you got the right pitch for instance right here we got 9.3 so because these these roofs are going to especially if they're metal they're going to dip in a couple different areas especially if they're older so this roof pitch is 912 is what we call it if you want more information on what again a roof pitch is or the slope of your roof we have a separate video and i'm gonna have that link below so now that we've taken all the proper measurements, not only are you gonna be able to order all your panels, but you're also gonna be able to order what you need for any fascia replacement, if you're planning on putting gutters on, also for your hip and ridge, and then also you need to have all those measurements to get what you need to have your drip edge. So all those measurements can be used to get many of the other things and the other accessories you're gonna need for your total roofing system. Okay, so now that we have all of our measurements written down, look up on the screen and you should be able to see exactly what I have written down. Now, on this particular project, it's a very simple roof. I used a gable roof just so you guys could see how to get the basic measurements if you're wanting to use hand measurements and go ahead and draw it out. Now, what you're gonna do is with your measurements, you're gonna also use what's called a cut sheet. And I've placed a link on what a cut sheet looks like. There's a lot of programs to use this if you're a contractor out there. If you're a homeowner, I strongly recommend taking your measurements and going to your supplier that you plan on ordering your materials from and, helping, and allowing them to help you get the proper measurements. And if you're a contractor just doing this the first time, you should do the same thing with your supplier to make sure that you're getting the right measurements for all of your material because it's vital that you have that on a metal roofing job. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is actually how to get your measurements using aerial services. Now, there's a bunch of different ones out there. Uh, Eagle View is the very first one to ever start really doing aerial measurements. Uh, we use Eagle View, RoofScope, and we've even used Roofer before on all the different types of measurements out there. Now, I personally really like RoofScope a lot. Uh, it's one that we've used quite often here lately. I'm gonna provide the links to the different aerial measurements, but for you homeowners and you roofing contractors that's doing this the first time, I strongly recommend doing both if you wanna double check your measurements on everything. Those aerial measurements are gonna give you exactly what you need, and most of the time, they're gonna give you a 3D image of exactly what your links need to be on each one of your panels and they're gonna give you the overall square footage of your roofing system. So definitely use those. Again, I like doing things the easy way. So if you're a homeowner, I strongly recommend possibly using something like RoofScope or Eagle View to get your measurements for your roof to take to your suppliers. Okay guys, I hope that this video was more helpful than it was confusing. Again, here at Digital Roofing Innovations, we believe in using a modern approach with traditional values and showing you the easy way to do things. So, to sum everything up, I really do feel like using an aerial measurement device like Eagle View or RoofScope is gonna make things a lot easier for you on ordering your metal roofing material. The reason I wanted to show you how to do it manually, there's some times where you're gonna do a big project like this one where you use all the aerial measurements you can, but you still need to field verify your panels. So when I'm doing a big uh, project like this, we'll actually draw out the roof. We count each panel exactly um, how many we have, the measurements of the links, the measurements of the links. So we double, double check everything because again, one mistake on 
your measurements on a large roofing project like this could maybe cost you tens and thousands of dollars, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you just want to double, double check all that stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from Digital Roofing Innovations, please go subscribe. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please leave us a comment below. Have a great day.